who didn't have a crush on me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? oh, yeah. This guy was in a tux with a big, big, big bouquet of roses. <laughs> the thing is, I didn't like him, so I was like, no. Yeah. Sexiest woman alive. How did I feel? <laughs> like, oh, that girl. <laughs> so nobody gives away four million in cash. Hi, I'm Camille with Monica, Maddie, and Gia, and you're watching G Talk. Jessica is attending some important matters, but we have Maddie today, our guest host, who's a rising star in the Bay Area. Welcome, Maddie. Hi. Thank you for having Hi, me. Maddie. I'm super excited. We are excited to have you. Here. But for now, I just want to share with you a, a quote that I came across. It's an empowering quote, and it says, a strong woman loves, forgives, walks away, lets go, tries again, and perseveres no matter what life throws at her. And I think it's a great reminder that when times get tough, your current situation does not have to determine where you will end up, your final destination. Very true. And don't be a woman that needs a man. Be a woman a man needs. And to add on, I think a strong woman is confident and, and is able to smile in the morning like she wasn't crying or bawling the night before. <laughs> yeah, that's so right. true. Oh, I mean, well, our guest for today is all of those things, and people admire her for all over the world for her pulchritude, her authenticity, and strength, and we are happy to have her. Please welcome actress, host, and former MTV Asia VJ. She is known as the Audrey Hepburn of the Philippines, and she is beautiful. Please welcome the Wonder Woman, Danita Rose. Hi, Ooh. hi everybody. I loved that introduction. Wonder Woman, yeah, I'm thrilled about you, Anita. I feel like I need to pay you guys for such a wonderful introduction. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. You were the hottest girl in the country, but then you got hitched, right? Mm -hmm. And then years later, you find out on Valentine's Day of all days. Oh, someone did her research. Okay. <laughs> You found out someone was, you know, yeah, doing something on Valentine's Day. And what did you do? You immediately forgave him. Um, Not only that, you even wrote a letter of apology. Are you for real? I'm willing to forgive somebody who would just come forward and admit their mistakes. And so when he said that, I just felt forgiveness. I just felt some sort of peace come over me. And I felt calm and I just felt over an overwhelming sense of love for the person. And I realized, oh shucks, O-S-H-I-T, that was in my mind. <laughs> this is unconditional love. You know, you, you first, you know, when you get married, honestly, I don't still think that it's unconditional love. When you first get married, you have the jitters, you know, honey, you're in your honeymoon stage. When you have a baby, that's when you really experience unconditional love because they have nothing to give you back. But that was the first time I really felt uh, like truly, truly felt, oh my gosh, this is what unconditional love is. It's when someone who doesn't deserve your love anymore, yet you can see beyond that. And, and I was smiling at him and he's like, and he, he did say at first, you're lying. You're just saying that to get me to admit. And I said, no, I, I I don't understand. I don't even understand because, but I don't know what's happening to me. I, I couldn't explain it. Everything happens for a reason, right? You know, the main reason is because now I'm a better actress. My who got? I love you. Who got? Who got? Was like, you know, I, my 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 entire career. I mean, I did action films. I did like a little bit of drama here and there, but it was always really difficult to get me to cry because. I've, I've always had a kind of a happy life, happy childhood. I grew up in a happy home, you know. To get me to cry back in the day was so difficult. Like I had to like, I basically murdered every member of my family. I killed my mother, I killed my father, like 50 times. So when my, so when my grandmother passed, I didn't feel anything because, because I'd already killed her 50 times. So 
<laughs> it's like acting, right? I mean, I mean, you guys would understand what I mean, right? But but then when I went through this whole thing, I was like, oh, SHIT, like, this is what it feels like to be stabbed in the back. Oh my God, this is what it feels like to want to take revenge. Oh my God, this is what jealousy feels like. Oh my God, this is what insecurity is like. So, and then it gets worse and worse, and then you snowball into this monster. So now I'm seasoned veteran actress as well. <laughs> Are you crying? When, when the director would say, um, okay, this is the crying scene, I'd be like, how many layers of bitterness, <laughs> resentment, unforgiveness? You know, I'd go through the list like, like an onion, right? <laughs> Okay, I'm not, I'm, not even, I'm not even kidding you guys. Danita, like, Danita, this is the crying scene. <laughs> you can make me do it right now. Yeah, Are you one of those okay. actresses that when the director says you cry and you say, which one, left or right? No. <laughs> I, I, actually, if, I, if there's one thing that I need to develop further, it would be more control. Mm. Oh. Because now I'm like a volcano. <laughs> The last, um, the last project that I did in Manila was The Last Woman Standing. That was under Viva Films with John Gibbs. I played his wife. I, I actually played his girlfriend for many years on a sitcom called Over the Bakoy. Mm -hmm. So I, I played his love interest. My name was Barbie Doll. People mm -hmm. still call me that today. And um, so this time I played his wife, but it was a dark comedy. So can you imagine, I'm crying. I'm like, I'm like bleh, all over the place. <laughs> And it's a comedy scene. Huh. <laughs> Beat that. <laughs> right? okay. like, you can do that. And yeah, and then you start to get a bit psychotic. Can I, I just ask this question because she brought in Jano Gibbs. This is Cheese Miss. Oh, Did Jano yeah. Gibbs have uh, like a crush on you back then? Who didn't have a crush on you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, um, yes, he did. He did. I really attribute the comedy part, the, the being uninhibited, a lot to Jano. I always tell people he was my mentor when I was in Over the Backwood because I was really shy and you would never get that from me right now, right? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I mean uh, <laughs> but back then, I mean, from uh, I, when I finished high school, uh, up until I finished high school, I was extremely shy, no friends. And then showbiz happened and everyone was like, her? showbiz and then my claim to fame was and you we were talking about this off air about speaking tagalog like i couldn't speak a word of tagalog i only learned lalaki babae pera <laughs> <laughs> those were like the only words that i ever knew back in the day my mom is from pangasinan and i speak pangasinense fluently ever since i was a kid i can speak wow. So, pisang <laughs> bangos. <laughs> Boneless bangos, okay. So. Do you have any stories that you can share? Three examples specifically. Um, you don't have to name names, but three examples. It could be either the most bizarre kind of courtship. It could be the sweetest. It could be something that took you by surprise. Any three examples could you share with us? How many hours do you have for this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know. um, okay, the first one that comes to mind was Gary Estrada. Oh, I'm not supposed to name you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. Well, but, no, okay. but he was, he was my boy. Well, I mean, you know, that's okay. I guess it's common knowledge. But he was my boyfriend back then. And then <laughs> my parents really didn't like him for me. So, um, so we were like Romeo and Juliet back in the day because we were like a love team, but my parents didn't allow it. So we actually were blocked from doing a couple of movies um, together. One time he rode in um, my publicist's car. So this was, her name was Virgie Balatico. She was probably in her seven, late 60s then. She had this really, really raggedy car, right? It was like falling apart. She brought me to, her car, to the car to go see him and he was sick, he had a fever. And he hid in the in the trunk of that car for hours just so he could take a glimpse of my gorgeous face. <laughs> so, yeah, that was it. Uh, that was one. And then, <laughs> and then two, there was this guy who um, said he liked me, and he asked. Uh, we uh, we we went to Palawan. I was with my brother, and uh, he was with his family, and 
and we 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 all kind of went together but i didn't really know this person and then at, by the end of the trip he said he was interested or like showed interest in me and he he said can i come visit you in singapore and i was like oh i'm sorry I, i'm not interested in you in that way i mean you know, i i appreciate your <laughs> the boldness to 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 tell me that but you know i'm i'm really not interested and then his secretary uh said what would you do if he still um if he like showed up to on the plane to to go back to singapore with you i said i would be mad because i already made myself clear i got on the airplane i got i got on the plane and this guy was in a tux with a big 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 bouquet of roses oh wow he was waiting for me i was so mad i was so mad because this guy's kind of like stalkerish right <laughs> I didn't talk to him to the, on the for the whole trip, the whole three and a half hour flight, and then he stayed on the plane and then flew back. He was sitting like um, it was, big it was like my seat and then the aisle, and then he was in the seat next to me. I was just like this the whole time. <laughs> um, so, and then the third one was a politic. Oh, I'm not supposed to say that. Anyway. Right. You didn't say the name. You yeah. didn't say the name. Yeah, a politician sent me flowers, but not just roses. From the lobby, from the from the entrance all the way to the lobby, all the way to the elevator, all the way to my unit, it was filled with petals everywhere. A ro not petals, roses everywhere. What? That thing is, I didn't like him, so I was like, no. <laughs> was he much older than you? Or? Yeah, he was much older. Okay. Yeah. I've heard of a lot of indecent proposals in the entertainment industry. Did you ever get some? No, I don't know. Maybe it's because I don't um, show any skin. I should show a little. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, I was on the cover of uh, FHM before. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I was on the five covers, five different covers. Uh, I was uh, Philippines, mm -hmm. Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand. Malaysia. Indonesia? <laughs> I don't know Indonesia. Anyway, I think four or five, but um, all of them, I'm like, I'm in a turtleneck up to here. <laughs> Sexiest woman alive. How did I feel? <laughs> oh, well now, I, you know, of course it's like one of the best things that ever happened to me because, you know, I, yeah, you know, I always tell my son, you know, once upon a time I was off, I was on FHM and he's like, yeah, right. <laughs> He doesn't believe me. <laughs> He's never seen any of my stuff because I don't really, Fine. I don't put pictures up in the house. I don't like, you know, we were saying off air, some of my commercials I've never seen before. Um, so like my son has not seen my stuff. He doesn't, doesn't think I'm famous. <laughs> no respect, no respect. Yeah. So Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt broke up and mm -hmm. broke everybody's heart as well. And you know, what hope is there for the rest of us? <laughs> even, even the most beautiful people still break up. Like I personally know of people who only like to pursue like gorgeous people and they end up getting hurt all the time. The popular song of um, Andrew E called Humanap Ka Nam Pang It. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? So yeah. what are your thoughts on that? Oh, you know what? If you look at my track record, Oh, that doesn't sound so good, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't mean it that way. Okay, this, is, this is what I meant. Okay, let me explain. <laughs> let me explain. Okay. <laughs> my track record is that all the guys in my past are not necessarily good looking. Mm -hmm. There, there's a the the common thread in all of them is that they're super funny. I think. <laughs> Meeting someone that has a personality that is fun to be around, I think that's more important to me than having someone who has good looks. I actually dated someone. Nobody knows about this um, <laughs> until now. Uh, <laughs> since I've met this person, it's been the best time of my life. Um, just because this person is kind He's super funny. He treats me so well. He's not the handsomest guy in the on the planet. Um, I even call him Poggy, and he, we think it's super funny, right? But I would choose that any day over just a gorgeous face and body. 
they're saying courtship is the same, but it's just there's a different medium right now, an easier medium for them to flirt or show their affection. Well, right. The difference between then and now, then it was a lengthier process. Now you swipe right. <laughs> right? <laughs> Right? <laughs> swipe left, swipe right. It's very instant. I realize now that I'm actually not looking for love. Like if I, if I, because when we met, we both weren't, we weren't interested in each other. We were looking for love. It just kind of developed along the way. And that's kind of how I would want it. Like I've never been on a dating app. I'm, I'm too scared. I know you're scared with that, but what makes you so scared trying like those apps, the the match.com, those I don't know. No, <laughs> it's like not a like No, I I I'm like really scared. I don't know, like I guess because they say you have to weed out, right? You, you you'll come across some some decent ones and then you'll come across like I don't want to have to deal with that. My son says that while we were in the Philippines, I was always so stressed out. Um a lot of it was financial burden but now that um, um i'm rich <laughs> <laughs> well because I, I was i was going through some major financial problems back before um and then i sold all my things and god really gave me a miracle and so now i'm out of debt and my son is like mom i think we're going to really enjoy our time together in the states like let's really enjoy life and and i said you know what i agree i think we should enjoy each other more and I shouldn't, I don't want to worry about, you know, debt and finances and everything. I just really want to enjoy. I've, I've been a go, I, I mean, I've been a go-getter my whole life. I've been taking care of my family, my, my, even my extended family, my whole life. So now it's time to really just enjoy where I'm at. And then okay. maybe if I get bored, then I'll try to app. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like after this gets released, uh, all the guys are going to be messaging you, sliding in. Would you ever consider asking, I know you said you didn't want to do the, the apps, the dating apps, but would you ever consider asking out a man? Yeah, I can't. <laughs> oh, I can't. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's fair. I feel the same way, but let's say you like someone how would they how would they even know would do you even drop like would you drop hints i'm not the flirty type i'm not really she can, she can twerk huh? you can twerk no, I, I, I can twerk but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. later on <laughs> oh gosh i course everything through comedy so if i'm if i'm flirting with someone actually i do i i I'm always joking, so <laughs> I don't think a guy will know if I'm if I'm flirting. Career? Did you ever have to audition for anything? And like, what was the worst audition you ever had? I auditioned for the movie I did with David Hasselhoff, and um, I remember. Do you guys remember Amanda Page? Yes, of course. Yeah, so Amanda Page. We were in the salon, right? And this little girl says because I went to go get my makeup done by our makeup artist. And then she said, oh, I got the part already. So I was thinking in my mind, oh my gosh, like why did they call me in if she got the part already? So I felt defeated when I, when I went into the, to the thing, it was, she didn't get the part. <laughs> it's a with me. Right? But I still went in and I, even though I knew I wasn't going to get the part, I still gave my all. And then by the end of it, they said, uh, congratulations, you got the part. And I'm like, what? What? But Amanda got it. <laughs> and they're like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, Amanda said she you, you gave her the part. And she's like, no. I'm like, oh, that girl. <laughs> 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 oh, she's going to hate me for this, but anyway. And then, uh, then MTV. So I called. Of course, I'm already a celebrity, but then it was open to the public. So I called. And they said, okay, so meet us at Strum's Makati in the parking lot, uh, 9 p.m. So I waited 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. I think they came over at 11.30. It was just a crew of, I think, two people. They flipped on the lights, flashed me, and I was like, ugh. And they said, okay, state your name. What's your favorite song? And introduce the video. So I was like, um, hi, I'm, I'm Danita Rose, and you're, you're uh, my favorite 
song is from, I think I said Mariah Carey or something. And so this is her movie. Uh, this is her movie. This is her, this is her song. And then I, I introduced it. I don't remember what it was. So they, they turned off the lights and then they left. And they're like, okay, thanks, bye. And I was like, what? Yeah, like, what? what was that? Like, was that my audition? I felt so unimportant, right? Well, especially because it was like the job of my dreams. They called me back for another interview and then I went in and um, same thing. I just, I kind of, they kind of just rushed me through it and I was shaking and, but then they called me back many, many months later. And then they asked me to come to Singapore for uh, a one week uh, guest VJ stint. And then at the end of that, they, they asked me to come. So is there like something that you want to say to all those people that are confused and are struggling right now? The, the story I wanted to share with you guys earlier. So I had a condo unit in the Philippines. It was a three bedroom. And uh, during COVID, the lockdown, um, you know, ABS also shut down as well. And so it was a double whammy and there was no income. And of course you still have to pay the bills every month. So I really started to get into debt. So I ended up selling all my things and then I was able to pay off all my cash debts, but I still had my condo. Uh, it, was, it was millions, I still had to pay millions. I wrote them a letter. Uh, I asked if I, I told them that I was having trouble with payment. They gave me two months. And then I think it kind of went into like four, four months later, they came back to me and said, okay, so how are you gonna, can you start paying again? And I said, um, I really can't, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And what they did was they, they gave me a, 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 an exchange. So basically my three bedroom for a one bedroom unit and fully paid. So they gave me the title of the property, but not only that, the unit that they gave me is almost four million more than what I put in. Oh, wow. Yeah. So where do you, where does that happen? It's only gone now. Two years prior, um, I was at church and the pastor was talking about tithing. I used to always tithe and uh, I would even give 5% above that to people who I felt, you know, needed it. And during this particular time when he was preaching, um, I was weeping because I hadn't tithed in two years. And for me, tithing is not an indication of whether you're a Christian or a believer or not. It's really just an act of faith to trust that if you put this there, then God will return it, right? I told the pastor about it after afterwards because I'm very close to them. And I said, you know, I was crying and I didn't let anybody know, but I was crying under my hoodie. And then the wife said, can I pray for you, Danita? And then she prayed for me and she said, the Lord told me that he will pay your debts. So after that, I was in faith. I was like, okay, Lord, where are all the projects? Why is nothing happening? You know, why am I struggling? And it just started to get worse and worse and worse. And little did I know that exactly, two, well, I don't know if it was exactly, but almost two years later that God would pay off all my debts. And I didn't even have to work for it. Wow. So this in itself is a miracle. Um, there's, it's impossible. No one can say it's not a miracle. Nobody gives away 4 million in cash. Um, but if this can happen to me, this can happen to any, and I have so many other stories of how God has provided for me. You know, when I, when I, even before I was able to pay off all my debts, people would call me and say, Danita, what's your bank account number? And I'd be like, why? And he was like, uh, I'll just send, I'm going to send you a check because I know you might be struggling right now not knowing anything about my situation. And that was what got me through the first part of the pandemic, people sending me money, wow. um, you know, stuff. And um, God loves all of us, whether we choose to believe in him or not, he loves us, he wants what's best for us, he created us, right? I mean, that's my belief. Thank you for sharing your love stories, all your, <laughs> and your struggles too. It's, it's very, um, like I said, it's very inspiring and, um, so when we are hopefully done with this pandemic and hopefully everything gets, you know, settled, um, I hope we will see you again on TV and on the big screen, hopefully. Yeah, or maybe in person. Oh, mm -hmm. I hope so. What are you busy with right now? Is, do you oh, have any so, um, You know, it's so funny. When I, when I um, arrived in the States, 
the next morning I told, I was told that um, somebody wanted to get me for a job interview. So I did a three day working interview as an office coordinator. I've never worked in an office setting before in my entire life. And man, it was like, they threw me into the fire. I had to answer the phones and stuff. And man, all of a sudden I became a no Ilocano. I was like, <laughs> I couldn't speak English. <laughs> it was so bad. But I, I loved every second of it because it was something new for me. And it was, you know, in my mind, it was all comedy at the back of my mind. <laughs> but, um, and then just a few days ago, I got another offer, which is for um, Island Filipino. I think it's a, um, a chain of uh, Philip, or Asian, it's an Asian grocery store. And um, they are developing a line of products and they have asked me to develop the recipes for them. So right now we're kind of on a trial period. Um, I'm going to be coming up with seven recipes in the next 10 days. And then if, uh, you know, he's given me several options and then, so we'll, we'll, we're gonna take it from there. But hopefully, I'll hopefully, Maybe, you know, ideally, I would love to, um, you know, be a freelancer and do a little bit of, you know, culinary on the side and then do acting, you know, they're hosting there. I don't like it when things get too monotonous for me. Danita, we enjoyed having you with us today um, and we appreciate your candor. You were inspiring and it's very easy to see that you're not just beautiful on the outside, but you're truly beautiful on the inside as well. And it just, it radiates from you, <laughs> genuinely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you so much, D. And guys, please uh, send some love to Danita in the comment section below. Let us know what you love about this episode in the comment section below. And we leave you with this quote by Luke Easter. A strong woman knows that she has a strength enough for the journey, but a woman of strength knows that it is in the journey where she will become strong. Thank you for watching.